There are countless submerged and very ancient cities dotted across the oceans of our Earth. Many of these cities all but forgotten until their rediscoveries within the modern era. When attempting to locate these mysterious places, it is beneficial for one to be aware of past sea levels. This, of course, can make the task of locating these submerged cities an awful lot easier. The main consensus is that world sea levels have largely stayed the same since the arrival of Homo sapiens, only really dipping or rising by around 120 meters across the Earth. When discussing these finds, you will, on all but a few exceptions, find yourself within these specific regions. One of the more interesting exceptions to this rule has to be the underwater city which was discovered just off the coast of Cuba a few years ago, a submerged city, which sits over 700 meters below the waves. This depth, of course, being far below that which has experienced a breach over the past hundred or so thousand years. A theory that the landmass once rested upon the surface, subsequently being sunk by tectonic activities, was argued. Yet since its exploration as a possibility, it has been found to have not been the case. It seems that these exploratory analysis of the site has achieved nothing other than to make the site even more perplexing. The results of this investigation strongly indicating that this city and its accompanying landmass somehow remained under the waves for more than a hundred thousand years. Greenville Draper of Florida's International University concluded that it was highly unlikely that such a tectonic event could have occurred, quoted as saying, Nothing of this magnitude has been reported ever before, especially from the Mediterranean. Draper's, among many others' analysis, has of course come to conclusions. Conclusions which thankfully appear honest making them extremely controversial, yet as with other fields of study in life, they are reluctant to reveal the implications of such conclusions. For example, if the research is correct, and judging by the extremely capable people tasked with this undertaking, there is no reason to suspect it is not, then this submerged city has remained submerged for over a hundred thousand years. This gives us two possible alternatives. One that the city predates the arrival of developed man on Earth, according to academically accepted timelines, or two, it reinforces our ever-growing accusations here at Mystery History of a past here on Earth which is unimaginably more ancient than we have been led to believe, a human society which has flourished and regressed on no less than three occasions. It could, of course, be both. There is a possibility that this ancient city was indeed built submerged under the waves by a once highly advanced civilization of Homo sapiens. Yet a more likely scenario, of course, would be that this ancient city was constructed at a time when the Caribbean Sea was a dry basin, and as the sea began to form, it was subsequently submerged. Yet, alas, modern academia readily rejects such a hypothesis. So. If we do not accept this as a likely possibility, then we must conclude that a primitive ancient culture, with primitive stone tools and certainly no diving equipment, were somehow responsible for the construction of this submerged city, complete with enormous pyramids on a foundation resting over 700 meters beneath the Caribbean Sea. During the installation of a natural gas pipeline by the Israeli Natural Gas Lines Company, a miraculous discovery was unearthed. Initially protected from prying eyes, the details of which, along with photographic studies, have now been officially released to the world via Israel's Antiquities Authority. A complete, if not intact, Egyptian sarcophagus. And even though the tomb had been broken, which was initially believed to have been the results of tomb robbers, the remains of this ancient and obviously once very wealthy Canaanite soldier was found to still be resting within, along with all of their burial artifacts left for them to use in the afterlife, which were found amongst the broken fragments. The rare artifacts were uncovered during delicate excavations by the Israel Antiquities Authority near Tel Shadud. Part of a burial site dating to the Late Bronze Age, 13th century BCE, was exposed in the excavation at the foot of Tel Shadud, and according to the excavation directors, Dr. Edwin Vandenbreck, Dan Kersner, and Dr. Ron Bieri of Israel Antiquities Authority, they discovered a unique and extremely rare find. 
a cylindrical clay ancient Egyptian coffin with an anthropoid lid, surrounded by a variety of Egyptian pottery, consisting mainly of storage vessels for food, tableware, cultic vessels, and animal bones. The skeleton of an adult was found inside the clay coffin, and next to it was a bronze dagger, bronze bowl, and hammered pieces of bronze. The researchers said, quote, We assume the deceased was an official of Canaanite origin, who was engaged in the service of the Egyptian government. Another possibility is that the coffin belonged to a wealthy individual who imitated Egyptian funerary customs. The researchers add that, so far, only several anthropoid coffins have been uncovered in the country. The last ones discovered were found at Deir el Bala some 50 years ago. According to the archaeologists, an ordinary person could not afford the purchase of such a coffin. It is obvious the deceased was a member of the local elite. The graves of two men and two women were also located near the coffin. The discovery of the coffin at Tel Shaddad is evidence of Egyptian control of the Jezreel Valley in the Late Bronze Age, 13th century BCE. During the period when the pharaoh Seti I governed the country, Egyptian culture greatly influenced the local Canaanite upper class. Signs of Egyptian influence are occasionally discovered in different regions, and this time they were revealed at Tel Shaddad and in the form of a very special tomb of someone who was once very wealthy. What makes this find particularly special, however, is the fact that it is an Egyptian anthropoid coffin, and it contains some incredibly rare artifacts found next to the skeleton, and quietly cataloged artifacts which tell an unbelievable story. A solid gold Egyptian scarab seal affixed to a ring, which was often used to seal documents and objects by Egyptian royalty. It contained the name and crown seal of Pharaoh Seti I, who ruled ancient Egypt within the 13th century BCE. Seti I was the father of Ramses II, identified by some scholars as the pharaoh mentioned in the biblical story of the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. In the first year of his reign, 1294 BCE, a revolt broke out against Seti I in the Bet Shane Valley. Seti conquered that region and established Egyptian rule in Canaan. The reference to the pharaoh Seti I, of which found, aided the archaeologists in dating the time of the burial to the 13th century BCE, making the burial around the time Seti would have indeed passed away. This is extremely compelling evidence to suggest that this could be the actual burial sarcophagus of Seti I. Although Israel's antiquities are clearly wary of making such a claim publicly, the name and the crown of Pharaoh Seti I, who ruled ancient Egypt in the 13th century BCE, appears on the seal of the sarcophagus also. For over a hundred years, we have been led to believe that Seti I was found at Deiru i Barai in 1881, a temple constructed over 200 years after his death, attributed as the holiest of holies. It had a burial chamber designed into its construction, which is said to have housed numerous important figures throughout the ages. Was Seti's mummy an imposter, used in place of the lost sarcophagus, that for all this time has laid within Israel, which at the time of his rule would have been the front line of his invasion armies into Syria and Libya? Officials now say that the tomb was that of a wealthy soldier. This would also, of course, make sense once one became familiar with Seti's war-ridden reign. Was this elaborately buried soldier once a pharaoh of ancient Egypt? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.